Toronto. Thank you. Can you briefly introduce yourself? Yes, um, 저는 Jessica입니다. Uh, 저는 영어 선생님입니다. Uh, and 저는 캐나다 사람입니다. I have been living in Korea for two and a half years. I'm an English teacher there, and I also write a blog for the government of Korea. Mm -hmm. So when did you first encounter Korean culture? Actually, we had a lot of Korean students at my university in Montreal, but about my second year of university, I got the idea into my head that I wanted to teach English overseas, and I don't know why, but in my head I chose Korea, and about two and a half years later, I moved there. Mm -hmm. So what was the most memorable event or episode ever happened while you were in Korea? Um, it took about four months to become acclimatized, and during that time I was shocked by how friendly Koreans were. It was really lovely. So it wouldn't be one singular event so much as how hospitable Koreans were. I would get invited to dinner, to tea. Um, often Koreans would invite me over to come sit and talk with them. The first time I really felt welcome was hiking in Seoul. Mm -hmm. And a group of elderly Koreans invited me and my friend to go sit with them at their mat. And they had a huge mat full of Korean food that they shared with us. And we ended up hiking the rest of the mm -hmm. mountain with them. It was really wonderful. So while, while you were in Korea, what was the most uh, shocking or culture custom that you didn't well, expect to? <laughs> when I first came to Korea, uh, the first night I was there, my new co-workers took me out for dinner and they ordered everything for me, which was fine. I didn't know the food or the language. But then I noticed that we were all supposed to share the mm -hmm. same food. So you share the same pot, you eat with your chopsticks, and everything was shared. And my co-workers would reach across the table and pick food right off my plate and say, oh, this is delicious. Yeah. <laughs> so that was very surprising for me as a Canadian. I'm used to having my own dish, and if I'm going to share my food, someone will ask or I offer it first. Um, now I've gotten quite used to this. It means you can try every food on the table mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to having just your one plate and being stuck with it. I like the idea of sharing it now, but it did take some getting used to. So speaking of the food, which one is your favorite Korean food? Well, I live in Busan and the seafood is fantastic in Busan. So the best thing to do is go to Jigalji Market. I don't know the names of the fish, but you point and pick Mm -hmm. any fish, seafood, shellfish that you like, and you can have it served up on the spot. It's mm -hmm. fantastic. I also really enjoy Andom Jin Duck, oh, yeah. a special dish mm -hmm. from the Andom city. There is one Korean food that most Westerners are scared to ever try, which is a live octopus. Oh yeah, yeah. I've had it. I really like it. You like it? I like Sangnakji, yes. <laughs> you like the sesame oil and... Yeah, it's really good. Um, sometimes I have it with gochujang. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've had it a few times. Wow, you become more like... <laughs> <laughs> but I'm... I've even had bundegi, which oh, really? is also not very popular try. with, with uh, foreigners, but it's not my first choice. Mm -hmm. um, the one food I find foreigners don't like as well is pat bing su or anything uh -huh. with red bean, but oh, I'm see. also a fan. Yeah, <laughs> yeah once you taste it, you, you get addicted to it. Yes, yeah, I even wrote an article about pat bing su mm -hmm. for a local magazine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I heard that you were writing a blog about Korean culture, yes. so how did it happen, you know? Actually, uh, through a girlfriend of mine, she was another expat living in my, the first city I lived in. And she applied for the blog, and I saw what she was doing. I've always been a writer and photographer, mm -hmm. and so I was very interested. I'd spent my entire first year traveling around Korea, taking thousands of photos mm -hmm. and writing about it for myself. And this was a wonderful opportunity to share the two things I love, writing and photography, with others. And I was already doing the traveling and had all the Korean friends. I was doing most of the work as it was. so. It was really a great opportunity. I applied, and this is my first year writing mm -hmm. for this blog. Is there what, which one is your favorite uh, blog about Korea? Do you have any? My own personal yeah. blog. Um, I recently wrote one about the Gamcheon Culture Village. Mm -hmm. It's in Busan. It's a it's known as the Santorini on the Sea of the East. So it's these beautiful little buildings that were built uh, during the Korean War as a refuge um, for those fleeing from the war. And now they've been repainted and redone as a cultural and art center in Busan. So there are 
beautiful paintings and artworks that have been installed by professional artists as well as the locals. And I wrote a blog entirely researching that and with all of my own photos. It, it took a few weeks mm -hmm. to work on and it's my, my proudest piece. I'm very proud of it. So which, um, what is your favorite tourist de destination uh, well, that Westerners should visit in Korea? So if you're in Busan, the Gamcheon Culture Village that I just mentioned is a hidden gem. We didn't see any other Westerners when I went there, uh, but it's a total delight, well worth a day. I also really enjoyed um, going to Sokcho mm -hmm. up in Gangwondo. Beautiful beaches, a beautiful fish market. I would really like to go back and spend another week there. Um, I, there's so much to do in Seoul, you could easily spend weeks going through there, but it's the top destination and mm -hmm. there's so much more to mm -hmm. see. A few years ago, you know, that there are many people know about Korea or mm. care about Korea, but now Westerners start to care about Korea and wanted to more about Korean culture. So what is your comment and what is your thought on their growing expectation and interest? Mm. Well, even for myself, when I left Korea to make this trip, I was shocked that I, I kept picking out Korean things. Oh, that's Korean music. Oh, mm -hmm. there's Korean food. And my eye was immediately drawn to it. Um, I've lived there two and a half years, and in that time I've seen the number of expats and tourists grow. Um, and it's usually it's a positive reception. People think Koreans are very friendly. The food is usually a hit, mm -hmm. other than the, maybe the fat things. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I meet more and more people who are coming solely for tourism, uh, and the business is growing. So I think the eye will be on Korea with the upcoming Olympics that mm -hmm. will be in Pyeongchang, right. uh, that will really bring focus on Korea. So I'm interested to see what will happen. Mm -hmm. Also, the suburbs are building up much more quickly. So every year that I go to a city and I return, I'm surprised at how much it's grown in a short time. Mm -hmm. So I personally am interested to see how quickly Korea will build, um, whether this will attract more tourists and more business and I think technology will be a major focus right. for Korea in the coming years. So are you planning to stay in Korea for a little longer? Or? Yes, <laughs> I've got another year and a half um, left in my contract. Uh -huh. um, I'm not sure what the future will bring after that, but I will be staying at least that much longer. Mm -hmm, I see. Okay, thank you very much for the interview. And I enjoy your stay in Toronto and have fast. Okay, thank okay. you so much. Thank you.